whether that's AWS or Azure or Google Cloud or on-prem or whatever it is. When you want to extend Kubernetes beyond the, this thing it runs containers, let's go for it. Am I right? This, this is the custom resource definition that describes the cloud yeah. resources inside of the Kubernetes. So you, you have there. There are two important things, right? Uh, beyond Crossplane itself, there are providers. So, like for example, AWS provider. And if you install the AWS provider, you get as many CRDs in your Kubernetes clusters as there are resource types in AWS, which is around thousand, right? So, AWS has around thousand resources you get around a thousand uh, CRDs. And then you would define something like uh, kind EC2, right? Uh, fill in the parameters, what's or not, and from there on, your Kubernetes cluster becomes a control plane that is managing, in that case, EC2 instances, or whatever you might be having, right? And then there is a second part, which we call cross-plane compositions. That's a way to group, compose different resources into something meaningful and provide it as a service to everybody else within your organization. So, for example, I want to say, hey, I would like to manage a database in AWS, right? Now, from the ops perspective, that means that you need RDS, you need subnets, you need VPCs, you need a bunch of different things, right? But from the end user perspective, all that is irrelevant. I want a Postgres database. Don't give me all that subnets, VPCs, nobody knows what, right? So compositions help that. It allows you to define whatever you want to define, and then behind the scenes, it's managing certain resources. What about the complexity? You know, because as far as I understand, this is the additional, some like framework or middleware. I'm going to answer that with a question. <laughs> forget about crossplane, forget about infrastructure, forget about all those things. If you use Kubernetes, why do you use Kubernetes? For manage. your applications, simple scenario. Why do you do that? Uh, manage the scalability. Yeah, have an API, maybe use some GitOps, uh, maybe because you like uh, your applications to be fault tolerant, uh, scheduled somehow without you doing that, and so on and so forth. Try right? reconciliation, drift detection, many, many good things are the reason why people are using Kubernetes. Now, if that's the answer to that question, then the next question becomes, why is it is that beneficial only for managing applications, packages, containers? Why wouldn't the same principle, same tooling apply to anything else? The idea behind Crossplane is the other way around. It's designed to reduce the complexity of the end users. Compositions are meant to reduce the complexity. Now, that's not a reduction of complexity for everybody. Somebody has to deal with low-level details. That's unavoidable, right? Uh, if something is too complex for somebody doing something, that means that that somebody is operating at the wrong level of abstraction, right? So somebody might say, hey, for me, the right level of abstraction is that I'm going to compile my own Linux kernel, right? For others, that will be a distribution. For somebody else, that will be another layer and another layer and another layer, right? Complexity is almost never in the tools. Complexity is almost always in the level of abstraction that somebody chooses to use. Yeah, cross-plane under the hood is YAML or something, I don't know, DSL? So, cross-plane is YAML because Kubernetes is YAML, <laughs> right? Uh, you need to propagate YAML to Kubernetes API to do something, whatever that something is. Now, how you generate that YAML that's a real question, right? And you can generate that like YAML uh, by like dozens of different ways, right? You can write YAML directly. You can uh, be a person who likes Helm and, or customize. You might be using CDKs and write uh, things in Go or JavaScript, right? There are dozens of tools that will spit out YAML, right? It's, uh, I don't even think of that, oh, that, does that mean that I need to write YAML? No, it means that you can write whatever you want as long as YAML is the final output propagated to Kubernetes API. My prediction is that Kubernetes will disappear in a couple of years, right? 
Now, it will not disappear in a way how that usually sounds. It will stay forever. It's just that it will disappear from the eyes of the people, right? Just as right now, if I ask people around here, and this is people more involved in ops and infra than many other places, if I say, do you know what is a hypervisor? Majority of people will tell me no. I don't know what it is. What, what the heck is a hypervisor, right? And everybody's using hypervisors, right? Every single time you create a VM locally on your laptop, you, you use Docker, there is hypervisor, right? Yeah. You, you create TC2 instance in AWS, there's hypervisor and so on and so forth, right? And that's the future of Kubernetes. It will eventually become a building block of something that we are using, whatever the something is, and we will not even see it. It will disappear. It will never disappear, but it will be... It's direct usefulness will be to very, very few individuals, right? Everybody else will be, hey, I need a database, or I need an application. Is it running? Yes, it's running, right? Where we are going as industries, most companies, at least mid, mid to large companies, are building some sort of internal developer platform, right? And that means that um, everybody should be self-sufficient, meaning there is a thing that I'm specialized in, whatever that is, but I can also perform all other operations that are required for me without being very, very deep into it, because nobody can be an expert in everything, right? Um, and from my perspective, that means that everybody will be contributing services to such a platform, right? You are expert in something. You're an expert in managing databases, right? How can you convert that experience, that expertise, into a service that everybody else can consume so they don't open a Jira ticket to ask you, give me a database? Same thing goes for security, for automation, for CICD, so on and so forth, right? So, going back to your... And, Assuming that Crossplane is a component in building that uh, platform, such a platform, the answer to your question is everybody, right? Everybody is a consumer of potentially everything, but also everybody contributes their experience into that something, right? Uh, I see quite a lot of cases where people have a dedicated platform engineering team that is supposed to build a platform alone. That's silly. That will never work. Simple reason, because that would fail in the same way as every other similar attempt failed before. You cannot have five people who know absolutely everything. And absolutely ev knowledge of absolutely everything is required to build something like that, right? So, back to your question, everybody. The cross-plane is some kind of modern infrastructure as a code. Yes, yes. So. I would call it control plane, just to make a slight distinction, but essentially it is evolution of infrastructure as code, right? Just as infrastructure as code was evolution from configuration management tools uh, we had in the past and so on and so forth, right? So we get new names just to slightly distinguish that this is now similar principles but something new, right? Now, the reason why we need new tools is because today's principles and ideas are slightly different than those 10, 15 years ago, right? Like, if you look at the landscape right now, none of them gives you an API. None of them gives you the ability to query, to ask questions, get answers. Uh, there is no drift detection, reconciliation, so on and so forth. That's not because tools from the past were made by people who did not know how, what they're doing. They knew very well what, what they're doing, right? It's just that the the needs changed and the architectural decisions changed and uh, when that happens we get uh, new tools based on those principles and that's where we are right now uh, azure google aws vmware all the big players are jumping into the same game and that game is leveraging the all the building blocks given by kubernetes to provide certain solution, whatever the solution is. And in this case, that would be infrastructure as code. Infrastructure as code will be in Kubernetes. That's, that's decided. I decided right now. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so, and maybe last question. In my, from my perspective, the biggest advantage of tools like Crossplane, and not only Crossplane, many others, just to clarify, is that if they're designed from day one to be Kubernetes native, 
the advantage you get is not that it can run in Kubernetes. That's, that's the secondary advantage. The primary advantage is that every kube native tool works with any other kube native tool, right? So that means that we do not have, have a need anymore to create a whole ecosystem for a single project, right? I do not need to worry about how will cross-plane manifest be applied. There is GitOps for that, right? I do not need to worry about what happens with logs, or I don't need to develop it within Crossplane because there is a mechanism in Kubernetes how to ship logs wherever you want to ship them. Observability, security, policies, right? So you are, you have, we have a unique ability to stop creating ecosystems of specific tools, but create an ecosystem of a platform, which is Kubernetes, and make sure that everything works with everything. So going back to your discussion about uh, GitOps, yes, anything that is applicable to Kubernetes can be used by uh, GitOps tools, and that means that Argo CD, Flux, Rancher Fleet, Cut, uh, no, Carvel, Cup Controller, right? They all work with everything. Can you explain what is this, the Lego? <laughs> I don't know, uh, they took a picture of me at my company and made the Lego and uh, I think that uh, you can win this in exchange of uh, lifetime uh, spam in your mailbox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the exchange rate. <laughs> okay, but my question, why I need this? <laughs> you don't. I need it because uh, my daughter saw the picture and if I don't come back with this, uh, <laughs> I will probably have to bribe her with something much, 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 much more expensive. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you so much.